Welcome, I'm Ron Levitt, audiologist at Corvallis Hearing Center and founder of the Oregon Association for Better Hearing, the U.S. largest consumer test group for hearing aids and related technology. In the 28 years that we've been testing hearing aids and related technology, we've seen some major innovations in technology. And today, here with me, my longtime colleague and friend, Camille Jenkins, is going to talk about something that's very new in the area of cochlear implants. All of you are familiar, perhaps, with the Resound Alera with the mini mic that I'm wearing here. This device has allowed people to hear much better in noisy places and it's been a real point of innovation for those people who have had trouble hearing in restaurants, at conferences, in cars, even from the back seat when they can't see the driver. But the technology for cochlear implants, that surgical procedure which implants tiny electrodes in the inner ear where the nerve cells for hearing no longer are functioning properly have been in a constant evolution for the past 30 plus years. For those of you that don't know about cochlear implants, it involves an external device called a processor which picks up the sound and then an implanted device, a surgically implanted device that sends the electrical energy from the processor to the auditory area of the brainstem and finally to the temporal lobe of the brain where it can be interpreted as speech or other environmental sounds. Back in the early 80s, this device really only gave environmental awareness. You could tell that there was a sound present, but you could not tell what it was. Over the past 30 years, we've seen much evolution in this product. And today, Camille, uh, wears one of the very newest devices that I think is worthy of mention and we want to talk about a little bit today. Camille has a progressive family history of hearing loss. Both her mother and her aunt became quite deaf in their middle age and Camille has shown progressive hearing loss over the many years that we've known each other to where currently hearing aids provide very little benefit for her even though she's wearing a Resound Alera on her non-implanted ear and wears the newest of the cochlear implant technology on her left ear. That technology uh, historically was brought to you through very large instruments. I remember back in the 80s people would wear a large packet on their body with wires running up to their ears with a processor on the back of their head where the implant was placed and then many years later we were able to miniaturize that down to a behind the ear unit still fairly large but was within the last few months uh, a company named Medell, which is one of the three big manufacturers of cochlear implants in the world, came out with a device that truly is innovative. And I've seen this type of innovation in stair-step fashions. It rarely seems that technology moves ahead in a linear way. It seems that there are major stair-step jumps at a time. The mini mic of Resound is an example of that, and this device is too. Camille, tell them a little bit about your cochlear implant experience from the very first implant you had three years ago right. to the present uh, and how they've changed and uh, show them a little bit about how it's changed. My mother was implanted in 1993 and my aunt was implanted in 1992. The reason I tell you that is because that means I've been around cochlear implants for a long time. But it was still a decision that I wanted to push out into the future as far as I could. So I had always been a really good hearing aid user. And because of my acquaintance with Ron and his talents and skills with hearing aids, we had always been able to provide me cutting edge new hearing aids that would meet my needs. Well, about three years ago, I came to see Ron, and we fitted me with what was at that time the most powerful hearing aids on the market by Phonak. And a few
few months later, I was still not hearing where I wanted to be able to hear. So I started looking into cochlear implants. And what I learned was there are three companies in the world who make cochlear implants. And much like picking a hearing aid, they're companies and you have to make a choice. But unlike working with Ron, who helps guide that choice so that you get the best hearing aid that works for you and what your need is, with cochlear implants, it's different. The person who's going to receive the implant, they have to pick which implant to choose. So you're given three packets of literature about three different cochlear implant companies. So I started doing the research and I spent three months researching which company to choose. Well, the first company was a company in Southern California where I live and I wanted to love that product. But it was big and bulky and I just didn't care for it. So I was quickly able to narrow my choice down to two companies. One is called Cochlear America and one is called Medel. Cochlear America is out of Australia and their U.S. headquarters is in Denver. Med-El Corporation is out of Innsbruck, Austria and their corporate headquarters are, is in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. So after three months of research, I selected Med-El. And the reason I selected Med-El is many fold. But first and foremost, the company is a research-driven company. Much like Ron, who has always been interested in technology, I wanted to go with a cochlear implant company that I felt was really research driven. And more than a third of Med-El's um, money that they make goes back into their research and development department. The company is still owned by the original engineer and scientist who started the company. And in the, I was implanted, I had surgery in July of 2010. And after the surgery, it was outpatient, just in for half of a day, and then I came home. And after, it takes about four weeks for the surgery to heal the incision. And then you go back to see an audiologist who activates, they turn on the processor. Well, the processor is the external part that connects to the implant that's in your head. Well, it has to be programmed much like your digital hearing aids are programmed today. It's the same, the same thing. So the audiologist programs it. Different than hearing aids, that programming continues over a period of time. Like at first I would go back a week, and then I went back two weeks, and then I went back for a month, and then I went back for three months. Today, I only go about once a year for programming updates. With Med-L, um, one of the things about the, when I said I chose a research driven company, in the two and a half years that I've had my implant, Med-L has consistently introduced new products, consistently. It's been amazing. The first thing they did with my implant was you have an external device and there's a little cable and then there's a, uh, about the size of a quarter and it connects to the magnet that's under your scalp that goes to the implant. The first thing they came out with that I was so excited about was a new coil, the thing that, that's on your head, and it doubled the hours that you could use it running off of a battery. Most implants, you will have different options, like you can use rechargeable batteries or you can use cochlear implant. I currently use a 675 battery, which many of you are, may use in your hearing aids, but it's designed just for cochlear implants because it, the cochlear implant draws so much power. So then the next thing cochlear came, um, that Medel came out with that was exciting is new types of arrays, which is the device that goes into the cochlea and is actually has the electrodes that are electrically stimulate, stimulated. But then the most exciting thing that they came out with, and I was just recently received this, I'm the first person on the West Coast to get it, it's very, very exciting, is now the newest 
cochlear implant by Med-L, the external processor, is one piece and it just fits on my head. It's so small. You can see it, me holding it up with my hand and it just fits onto a magnet that's under my scalp and I hear and you can't even see it. You can see if I move my hair out of the way. But, but learning to use a cochlear implant it's a lot like learning to use a new hearing aid. I tell people when they're looking at hearing aids, you've really got to want this to work. You've got to want to hear better. You have to put the time in to wear it, to try different environments. The same thing is true with a cochlear implant. But a cochlear implant is dramatically different than a hearing aid. Because with the cochlear implant, your brain is actually learning a new way to receive sound. Therefore, over a period of time, it gets better and better and better. I'll, give any, I'll explain what I experienced. When you put a hearing aid on, you hear as good as you're ever going to hear with that hearing aid. That's, it's like putting glasses on. You put the glasses on and you can see. But with a cochlear implant, it's so different. Whenever many people get their cochlear implant activated, when it's turned on for the first time, there are a lot of people that are like my mother. She was so deaf by the time she got her cochlear implant. She really had not heard any sounds in a long time. So when they turned it on and she could just hear racket, but she was so happy to hear something and she started crying with joy because she was so happy. Well, my experience was very different. I had been a very good hearing aid user. You have to remember that. I knew what speech was like. My hearing loss started in my mid-20s. I started wearing one hearing aid at age 30 and two at 35. So I had been a very good hearing aid user. So when they turned on my cochlear implant, I looked at the audiologist and the first words out of my mouth were, this had better get a lot better. The audiologist's eyes got huge and she said, it will, it will. And I'm like, yeah, right. A month after wearing my cochlear implant, I was still only hearing about the same as I did with my hearing aid. That was depressing to me and it was concerning, but I kept on. And after month two, I noticed, boy, this is getting a lot better. And by month three, my cochlear implant was my primary source of hearing, even though I was still using hearing aid on my right ear. Initially, for several months, I would, in order to talk on the telephone, I would use a T the T coil on my cochlear implant, and I would use a loop. But after about eight months, I just hold the phone up to my implant, and I don't use a loop or any of that stuff anymore. But it was a gradual progression. In the last three to four months, there have been many days I don't even use my hearing aid. I just use my cochlear implant and I'm fine. Uh, it's been a really rewarding experience. It's totally changed my life. Um, I go to movies. I, it, it's, it's just opened up a whole new world. And again, I, I, I was hesitant to do this. I pushed it off as long as I could, but now I'm beginning to consider when I might have an implant for my right ear because hearing aids are giving me very little help now. Let's talk a little bit about that in terms of data. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, many people are familiar with the Resound Alera hearing aid with the mini mic. Many of our product testers wear that as their preferred hearing aid and both of my audiology assistants who have access to every hearing aid in the world marketplace uh, wear that as their preferred hearing aid because that mini mic does such a good job of picking up the voice you want and suppressing background noise. However, with Camille's hearing aid fitting on her right ear with her resound alara, with the mini mic with my voice in the presence of a moderate amount of background noise, she was able to score only 50% correct on a sentence test. By contrast, with only her cochlear implant active and the hearing aid taken off entirely under the same listening conditions, she was able to score 80% correct. So 
even with the best of hearing aid fittings and with the newest of technology available to help people hear in noise, she can't do as well with her hearing aid as she does with her cochlear implant. Another thing that people may not realize about hearing aids versus cochlear implants is that most, of, most people who have nerve type hearing loss can only tolerate a correction of about halfway between normal hearing and their existing hearing loss. That's true for Camille. As a result, when you have a hearing loss in the 90 decibel range, you can only bring hearing back up essentially to the 45 decibel range. In other words, she still shows a moderate hearing loss on her aided ear, even with the best of hearing aid fittings. By contrast, cochlear implants are not tied to this half gain or half correction rule. They can put you, if you have a properly inserted processor, a properly inserted electrode, they can put you back into regions unheard of with hearing aids. For example, Camille with her hearing aid, with her hearing aid currently, as I said, is getting about a hearing level of 45 decibels corrected. With her cochlear implant, she's in the 30 decibel range in terms of correction. And not only can she hear the sounds that hearing aids typically can amplify, she can hear sounds well above that range. So cochlear implants work on a whole different set of rules. They are not tied to the half gain rule. They can give you much more hearing. In fact, one of my colleagues, Carol Flexer, says that in Akron where she's worked with children with cochlear implants, routinely those children who had no residual hearing can be brought back to levels of 15 to 20 decibels, which is in borderline normal range for us normal hearing people. So cochlear implants offer a lot of possibility for those for whom hearing aids no longer work. Camille, do you have anything else you'd like to give people in terms of advice about cochlear implants? I've, I've heard a lot of people get information from well-meaning physicians that cochlear implants are only beneficial in the sense that they will give you awareness of environmental sounds. You really won't be able to tell a man's voice from a woman's voice and your ability to understand speech will be limited at best. You know, I think from people, I spend a lot of time talking to people who are considering cochlear implants. And you know, you can only get so much information from even educated audiologists who work with cochlear implants. It's still different when you talk to somebody who has it inside their head. It's, it's very different. So, whenever I was first activated, when it was first turned on, everybody's, the voices I heard, they sounded a little cartoony to me, kind of like Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck. But that went away in like four or five days. It went away really fast. In a very rare circumstance, very rare, I've met one woman who, when her cochlear implant was turned on, she heard immediately, fine, immediately. That's like never heard of. Like I said, it's a gradual thing. I remember when I first got my implant, it reminded me of when I got my first hearing aid it was hard to get used to hearing my own voice. That's always true. And then I, and now I would tell people, this is what it's like. On a hearing aid side, it's like taking the microphone and you put it to, it's like holding your cell phone up to your ear or a regular phone. You hold it because sound is out here coming in. That it's amplified by that hearing aid. That hearing aid is like putting a microphone to the room. But it's just like holding my phone up to my ear. But my implant side, it seemed like the phone was inside my head. It seemed like I was hearing two sounds and it took a few weeks for my brain to pull those together so that it didn't feel like it was a delayed effect or something. But for everybody, it's going to be a different experience. But it has been the best decision for me. I mean, it. Right now, today, I could not live life very satisfyingly if I was having to depend on hearing aids. 
I am very thankful that I live in this day and age of cochlear implants because my life would be really sad and especially if you grew up as a hearing person and you became hearing impaired later so I didn't grow up in a family signing and and you know I want to live in the hearing world and cochlear implants allow me to function and live in the hearing world all the time people tell me I can't believe that you do this well the people see a difference people even tell me I talk softer I mean it, it's it's just opened up a whole new world it's giving me a confidence back that frankly I was losing it was like I was watching my hearing go down the drain and my confidence was right behind it and people who have regular hearing don't realize those emotional effects of hearing loss it's huge it's huge so don't listen to someone tell you no they don't work don't listen to someone that tells you you can't discriminate words myself and thousands of others will tell you that's simply not true you can go to medel m e d e l dot com on the internet and there's something that they've created a website for cochlear implant users and people who are interested in being cochlear implant users. It's called Hear Peers. Hear, H-E-A-R, Peers, P-E-E-R-S, because you're hearing peers. And hearing peers is basically like Facebook for the hearing impaired people. And so I would encourage you to go to hearpeers.com and you can interact with people. You can even pick. You want to talk to a woman who's 40 years old or you want to talk to a parent of a two-year-old. So you can pick the age group that you want to talk, male, female, whatever. But there's a, there's a vast resources out there to interact with people who are actually living with cochlear implants to tell you what it's really like instead of going to a doctor or friend, someone who really is not up to date and aware of what's really out there. Thank you very much. And for more information, as Camille said, you can go to medl.com or you can uh, check out our website and we will have updates as they become available on all cochlear implants as well as hearing aids. Thank you for being with us here today. Thank you for having me. And we'll uh, see you the next time.